Good to see you, Dietmar and, and Gustavo. Uh, welcome back to the uh, Discovery uh, Hybrid Room uh, in Lille. And my topic uh, will be on golden rules to reduce radiation dose in the hybrid room uh, to a minimum. So I have a couple of slides and then I have a movie. If I'm running too long, just tell me, Dietmar, and I'll just stop. So uh, those are my disclosures. And, um, And so where do we stand? We did this study uh, two years ago. We looked at the first 100 patients that we treated in Lille uh, in the hybrid room and just wanted to see what was our uh, exposure to, to radiation. And uh, we were quite surprised to see that switching from a mobile uh, CRM to a fixed room, we dramatically, significantly reduce our dose exposure. This is the DAP. And the line above the, the, the green arrow is actually our experience before, and the rest is the literature. So you see there was a significant reduction. And if we move uh, to the complex endovascular repairs with Fender Street and Branch, you can see that uh, the dose reduction was even more significant, you know, from 3 to 15 compared to other centers that have published uh, on that subject. Now, uh, what we also did is uh, we looked at the operator exposure uh, over the lead apron, and you can see that for branch and for fenestrated endograft, uh, the uh, medium operator exposure was uh, just uh, above 23 uh, microsieverts. And if we look at the uh, limit for occupational exposure suggested by the ICRP, uh, we can actually do 2,000 fenestrated and branch endograft uh, before reaching uh, that limit. So we, have, we still have some, uh, some way to go. Now, how did we get those uh, results? Well, first, we're using a last generation hybrid room with the Discovery. You can see we are using a, a flat panel technology. And we have this auto exposure management loop, which uh, provides the best image quality with the lowest uh, radiation. Now, um, on top of that, there are golden rules uh, that you have to stick to to, to reduce radiation e exposure. And uh, the first one is uh, before the procedure, uh, you need to spend some time on your AW uh, workstation. You need to find uh, the best working positions and you need to actually, uh, once you've defined them, you can store them and you can call them back from table side. And the idea is that you don't want to shoot one, two, three runs to locate the origin of the internal iliac. You want automatically to be in the best working position. Now, you can also work on your uh, fusion mask, the bone mask for the registration, and the arterial mask uh, to, to uh, make sure that you have all the information uh, that you need throughout the, the, the procedure. Now, in the hybrid room, uh, the day of the procedure, obviously, uh, don't stay uh, just next to the bean. Um, whenever possible, uh, walk uh, back if you do a DSA run, use long cavities, uh, long sheaths, and wear um, all protections that, uh, that you can wear. Now, most important is uh, the, uh, the way you position the table and uh, the, the gantry. And you can see that if you position the table as high as possible and the, f um, the flat panel as near as possible to, to the patient's body, this is when uh, you get the less uh, karma at, at patient's skin. And uh, this is actually also when you get the less uh, uh, scattered radiation. And you can see on, on this small uh, video that uh, with the uh, discovery system, we have the InnovaSense application, which actually uh, with the IGS 730 positions the flat panel automatically as near as possible to the patient body. So every time I move the table, the gantry, the flat panel comes back uh, to a near position uh, of the, uh, the patient's body. And you can see that it has a, also a significant impact on the air karma. Now, if we look at uh, the way you can set up uh, the system, we always start the procedure in a low dose mode, uh, so the lowest uh, protocol possible and also the frame rate at 7.5 or even 375. And we'll switch to a higher dose mode or to uh, a higher frame rate only if uh, required, but in 99% of cases we'll just stick to the low dose mode. And you, for those of you who saw the, the live case this morning, the patient was 110 and uh, we still managed to, to do the whole procedure in, in a low dose uh, mode without any issue. Now, obviously, I um, promote the routine use of fusion, and we use fusion for every case, EVAR, FIVAR, branch iliac, and um, using an easy registration uh, mode, which is with a 2D, 3D registration, and I'll show you in the movie later on how we do it. Um, and using fusion actually helps you to find uh, your working position without x-ray, so you can position the table and the gantry without doing any x-ray, and only press on the pedal when you really need uh, to see something. 
Uh, we can also fine tune uh, the 3D mask at table side. So if at one point, if we've moved the mask with a stiff uh, delivery system, uh, you can shoot a small angel and fine tune it from table side. And then using Fusion also uh, gives you the ability to use digital zoom and not magnification. So digital zoom will increase the size of the image, but without increasing uh, the radiation. Now you can see here what happens when you magnify, and you can see how the, uh, the, uh, the dose will increase and how you're exposed to radiation exposure when you go from no mag to, to mag free. Now on the opposite, if using digital zoom, is, if on top of that you use collimation, you will also significantly decrease your radiation exposure. You can see that it's a one-to-one -one ratio with a 60% uh, collimated area as a 60% dose saved. And for example, for a regular EVAR, which a DAP uh, of 30, at the end of the procedure, if you've used collimation, then your DAP will be 18. So that's actually very interesting. Now, um, also remember that one DSA image is approximately equivalent to 500 fluoro image. So whenever possible, rather than doing a DSA run, do a fluoro loop that you can store. And this is the same for um, the um, roadmap uh, with the, the discovery. We can do fluoro roadmap. We don't do, need to do a DSA. And this is very interesting, especially for the, uh, the IDEX, because uh, we're usually working in a lot of uh, cranial and... Um, sorry, caudal and, and lateral angulation. So this is when you need uh, the most uh, radiation. Now you can see here that uh, talking about CRM angulation, that the, every time you move further than 30 degree RAO, LAO, or 15 cranial or caudal, this is also when you increase significantly uh, radiation exposure. So sometimes there's no choice. You need to be in, in those uh, extreme position, but whenever possible, switch back to an AP view. Now, We've shown you the, uh, our results in Lille, and we wanted to see if those results uh, were achievable elsewhere. So we run this multicentric uh, study, including centers in the US, in uh, Japan, and in England and France. And we looked at uh, all uh, EVAR uh, cases performed in those centers after um, a short monitoring. And all centers, obviously, were using the uh, fusion and uh, the discovery uh, system. And this is what is interesting. We started by monitoring uh, every, every uh, center. And you can see for this center, for example, at the beginning, uh, before entering patients into the study, their DAP was 37, which is actually quite good for a regular EVAR. You can see that uh, their, um, their mean um, uh, fluoro time was uh, almost 15. And you can see that they were not using collimation much. And on the opposite, they were using a lot of magnification. So the same center, after seeing that dashboard, um, uh, they just changed their practice with using a lot of collimation. You can see on top 70% and not using magnification anymore. And the same center, same cases, approximately the same fluoro time, they reduced uh, by half uh, their exposure uh, to, to, to radiation. And this is the preliminary results of this river study, uh, all the sites, and you can see that we've achieved consistent low dose results uh, throughout uh, the sites uh, just by simple monitoring and by using uh, all the, um, uh, the, 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 the discovery workflow, which uh, is really focused on those uh, uh, radiation. Now let's look at the, the global hospital stay and what has changed since we've switched to uh, mobile CRM to using the, uh, the hybrid OR. Before, um, we were actually working on the workstation a couple of weeks before the procedure to design uh, the endograft and then uh, we were using, uh, working again on the workstation the day of the procedure to prepare the fusion mask and then the patient was uh, sent to the ICU and then to the ward and then had the follow-up CT a couple of days later. Now we actually have merged the two first steps. So uh, we do uh, planning of the endograft and planning of the procedure, including the fusion mask uh, remote from the procedure. And then, then the day of the procedure, we do a cone beam CT at the end of the procedure. And so we don't need a discharge CT. Uh, we just have ultrasound so the patient is discharged uh, much faster. And this has actually also uh, been um, interesting in, in as far as uh, volume of contrast and those is, uh, are concerned, because you can see that uh, doing uh, second beam CT only requires a DAP of, of seven, uh, and the, the contrast that we use is only 35 cc of contrast. So altogether, doing cone beam CT, uh, sorry, I go back, I, I went too far, uh, doing, doing a cone beam CT uh, reduced the contrast volume and the dose of the whole hospital stay of the patient. 
And so in conclusion, uh, low-dose technology uh, by design is what you have with the, um, the discovery system, but this has to be associated with good practice. You have to stick to the other principle and be focused on reducing dose. Each step has a huge impact on those results. Uh, routine use of fusion imaging will full control our table side enables achieve low-dose results for EVAR in multiple centers, and the REVA study will soon be published. And the, uh, the specific workflow uh, of EVAR assays from sizing to cone beam CT, including fusion, you know, will help to reduce the total dose and contrast throughout the patient's hospital stay. Now, if I have time, I can show you a, a video uh, which uh, will run uh, right away, just to image uh, what I've just said. You see, this is the beginning of the procedure. I'm doing an AP fluoro um, and then switching uh, to a lateral view. You can see here the lateral view, uh, doing a fluoro again. So I only have AP and lateral fluoro. And then you see from table side, I'm going to position the image from the pre-ops uh, CT of the spine on top of the image of the, the, the fluoro image of the spine. And it just takes a couple of minutes from, from table side. And then st starting from there, I can um, position uh, my table or gantry without doing any fluoro, knowing exactly what I, I, I'm going to see. And you can see we have markers at the origin of each uh, target vessel. We have markers in the outer to show us um, uh, the proximal and distal uh, sealing zone of our endograft. And you can either use a 3D VR uh, a fusion mask or only use a contour uh, mask so that uh, you see nicely uh, what is happening in the outer. And you can see that I'm positioning everything without fluoroscopy, positioning the table, positioning the gantry. And then here I'm inserting the, uh, the endograft. And this was, I think, a four vessel fenestrated endograft and we're trying to get access to the right renal. So there's already uh, a wiring catheter position in the right renal and you can see I'm here advancing the delivery system of the fenestrated endograft. I'm going to shoot a small angio to fine-tune uh, my, my fusion because with the stiff delivery system inside the aorta, you've uh, changed the aortic anatomy. So you need to check that. So this is the next step. It's a very small run. It's 15 cc's of half and half, saline and, and contrast. And again, from table side, I'm going to fine-tune this uh, mask to make sure that I can trust it 100%. And now I'm going to open the endograft, knowing that I can trust my fusion mask. I don't need to shoot another run. And you see I have the origin of each target vessel nicely positioned. And then uh, remember, we have preset positions, so I can ask the system to go into the right renal, left renal position, and uh, to be in the best working position. See how the collimation um, is actually re reducing our uh, field of view? But I've used uh, digital magnification so I don't need uh, to have um, a regular magnification. Now, what are we doing next? Yeah, this is the, the digital zoom I'm showing you here. You see that the stent is already in the, in the right renal artery. This is how we're using collimation. And this is uh, access to the left renal artery. Now, we're now uh, positioning the sheath inside the left renal artery. And then this is uh, the system automatically positioned itself in the uh, best working position for the SMA. So the only thing I need to do at this stage is to uh, just set up the collimation uh, to focus only uh, on the tip of my catheter. And I'm going to position the tip through the fenestration and then access uh, the SMA. Stefan, Dittmar, I, so now we're in the SMA, we have a sheath in the SMA, yes? Sorry for interrupting, a little bit unpolite, but we have to look at our time, we're a little bit late, and uh, is it possible to shorten a bit and, and to come to a final conclusion? I, I, it's, it's hard for me to interrupt your excellent talk and your presentation. Yeah, so, but, you know, so, we, so go ahead. Dietmar, no worries. I think my, my, my uh, conclusion was already at the end of my PowerPoint. Uh, so the idea was to, to show you real life um, experience with all the system. So uh, I, I hope um, yes. so I wasn't too long. Sorry about that. Stefan, you, no, no, don't worry. Have a great um, session. It was nice to, to host you. Thank you very, very much. It was an excellent introduction to the topic. You presented a, a perfect uh, algorithm, uh, how you work and, and, and use your all your tools within the hybrid OR. Thank you and uh, apologize for making a point here, okay? Thank you and, uh, Thanks, Stefan. No worries. Thank you, Dietmar. Have a nice day. Bye-bye, Gustavo.